Hey guys, welcome to our new studio here. Hey guys. It's a little warmer here. This video we're calling the Match Guarantee Ladies Update. And a lot of you guys have been asking, hey, what's up with our ladies? Are we in contact with them? Um, is there any chance at matchmaking? You know, what's their mood? Uh, but first, Anna has a little thank you. Yeah, guys, I'm so much impressed and I'm so much grateful for you, all of you guys that, you know, you were super fast, super reactive to my previous video, asking for help to get helmet and uh, uh, Body jacket armor. Yeah, for my brother in Ukraine. And uh, like I see God already sent, sent me, you know, guys who will hopefully by the end of this week, uh, my brother will help all needed equipment. And it's like, it's still hard to believe that it's possible but because it's like miracle, you know, but I, I just pray that it will happen in the shortest time because now the time is most, most important. Thank you for all of your response and compassion and yeah. Even, um, I would just say, even Anna was talking or leaving a message to Denis, the brother, last night. Mm -hmm. And he said when he watched Anna's video, he was like, he's not a man that cries, but he had tears coming down his uh, eyes just for the the love, you know, and, and the response of you guys. I mean, just to give you a little idea on Denise, who um, and his brother is, he's already jumped in there from his own pocket. He's been buying medical supplies for soldiers that need treatment for their wounds. That's the kind of a man he is before he signed up and jumped in for service. So we're going to talk today about our ladies and yeah where they're at what they're thinking what they're going through so the first thing is we uh, sent an email out offering to help them right after when this war started you know whether it's help them if they need money if they need um, contacts and ability to evacuate like help with evacuation so we've been in touch with the ladies from get-go yeah and they still like you know it takes time to um, open messages because you know quickly to contact everybody we just send send out the mail yeah right and everybody while they have ability to get to internet open and we not email uh, culture yet yeah, country so it's like you check email one time in a week probably things like that but they still so they still contact us asking for help and uh, with evacuation with uh, financial support describing their situation asking if there is any man available <laughs> asking like i was you know five years with your agency and had only one skype call <laughs> what's the problem <laughs> like this, if somebody will be interested in you know i'm open please <laughs> yeah Especially, so honey, on that note, mm -hmm. what, what you're talking with the ladies mm -hmm. together with uh, Olga Petrovna in the office and Tatiana. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, uh, update on Tatiana. She's still, you know, our head, <sighs> head matchmaker, um, my partner. She's still going to bomb shelters every day in Kiev. So please pray for Tatiana, uh, Olga Petrovna and her. Okay, they made it out. Yeah. They made it out. They're in safe place. Yes. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. where are they again? H Hungary. Yeah, they're in Hungary. Yeah, for one month and then they will move uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, you know, so what would you say, honey, is overall, what are our, what's been the main theme from our ladies? Yeah, some of the ladies, they contact us, you know, when it happened, just to keep an update where they are, what's, how their life looks like, you know. And we see very different mood, you know, on a, on a lady's side. And uh, of course, it uh, depends on where they are right now. If they in, a, you know, in a like bad catastrophic place where everyday bombing, there is no mood for you know relationship for a meeting man. Of course, they just in surviving mode, you know. And uh, most of those ladies, they of course took action and uh, in, in right time, and they just move um, to the west of Ukraine, where still you can find a place where you know there's no bombing and theoretically you know safe yeah. not as much bombing yes uh, some you know like yeah so those ladies who live at least you know in the safe areas who moved out uh, to Poland Romania Moldova you know around Ukraine uh, you know they, they feel already you know uh, they're not in surviving mode, yes, right? They have a lot of help from volunteers in this country. They have, normally they have uh, uh, 
shelter for free, but they still need support, uh, money for buying food, you know, these things. Uh, and they, yeah, they have time and they're looking for what to do in life, you know, and like where to move and depends on their level, like, you know, if they know e English, or no, but actually English cannot help you a lot in uh, Romania or Poland, you know, it's like hard to get anyway, you know, good job. So they can get very, like, you know. Remedial job, uh, yeah. cleaning houses, nannies, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, so basically many of them, they're just waiting for until war will end, so they will be able to come back to Ukraine and, you know, continue to have normal life. Yeah, because a lot of you guys are thinking, you know, okay, the ladies are all gone. They're going to flee to European countries. They're going to meet a uh, European man and they're not going to be available. Um, and when all of this happened, we really didn't know how it's going to go down either. But in contacting our ladies, we're finding that most of them want to come back to Ukraine. They're just counting the, the days, even it being a war-torn country. When they come back, they want to come back. Yeah. Um, and a lot of them didn't leave. Of course, it, it can happen that she can meet in Europe, you know, good man. It can happen, of course, but it's not, uh, it's not majority case because you still need to understand that lady now, most of them, they like in very dramatic, uh, you know, emotional stage. They're right? in what we call fight or flight mode, right? Yes. They're, they're thinking of little else other than safety and security and getting settled down until they get that safety and security back yes um, and uh, as i talk to, to ladies i, I see uh, most of them they in this mode when they need um, um, they want men first of all for emotional support more than any other support to be able to share you know to release her you know by the emotions uh, I don't know, cry, they need this, you know, strong shoulder to, to cry mm -hmm. in, uh, yeah. Yeah, we have had that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for yeah. example, Michael and this Anya. lady, right? Yeah, yeah. Anya. they both want to. Yeah, she, she to. really wanted to talk to him, you mm -hmm. know, like a, a shoulder to cry on kind of thing. And we're finding that that the ladies are really in a, in a place where they, they, you know, this white knight. <laughs> They have this since childhood, Ukrainian lady, she looks for her white knight in shining armor mm. or knight on the white horse, however you want to say it. And now more than ever, we find that they're open to that, to, to changing countries, starting life over again, because let's face it, regardless, a lot of people in Ukraine are going to be starting life over again. And a lot of refugees going to other countries are starting, starting life over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you talk about ladies who, you know, in an area where is still, you know, like they, they can be involved a lot in volunteer job, you know, they don't really have time for, you know, for, for relationship, right? Who, who is in Ukraine? Who is helping, uh, you know, uh, cooking, I don't know, like pack, do packs, packing, you know, uh, but ladies who are yeah, in safe area and especially not in Ukraine, they're more open. Mm -hmm. Honey, let's talk about one of the big pluses right now. You know, I'm not sure if you guys thought um, about this, yeah. but, um, you know, in life, we always got to look at the, the pluses or the minuses, as they say in Ukraine, or the pros and cons. And we're finding right now, it is an incredible opportunity. You know, if, if you're the type of man who wants to swoop in and rescue the princess, you know, now's when they need rescuing. Of course, it's a bit of a double-edged sword. I get it that you've got to make sure that, you know, you have a quality lady that you're rescuing, right? And as long as that's the case, it's an incredible opportunity. And right now, coming out of COVID, I mean, COVID has uh, made K-1 visas go from like eight months to two years to approval for a, a fiancé visa for Americans. Now, and, and British, for example, um, now it's just happening like this uh, i mean ukrainian ladies can pretty much fly in to well you can fly into mexico now and walk across the border and they are being approved almost i would say almost rubber stamp um state right now uh uk we had a client that just um fast tracked um his uh, new wife and daughters um, immigration status to the UK. You got Australia opening up to three yeah, years. Three years. For three years, Ukraine. rubber stamp. 
approved. Mm -hmm. um, Canada completely open. Um, a lot of Ukrainians are immigrating to Canada now. So what that means is, you know, that that second stage of the relationship where after you've started the relationship and you understand you really want to be together, that is super fast track now and cheap <laughs> because Australia, it's about a $10,000 Oz dollar application fee to the government, for example. And it's not necessary. You will get it's it not here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if and if it's not approved, that money's mm -hmm. lost. Now there is no application fee. She can just come be with you in Australia. So, it really is a huge silver lining. Yeah. Yeah. But the caveat is, make sure you're talking to or you're meeting to quality mm -hmm. women, as is always the case. So, guys, um, honey, anything else to say? We are in touch with our ladies. We're finding they still have an appetite for dating. They're, they're wanting to meet guys. Those ladies that are, again, out of the fight or flight mode, that is, okay? There's still a lot of ladies in fight or flight mode um, locked down in, in Ukraine. And for one reason or another, either can't get out, have decided not to leave. Let's talk about that. Um. Let's talk about why so many Ukrainians right now more than 90% of Ukrainians are re are not leaving Ukraine why is that both ladies and otherwise honey uh, well, first I would say because uh, Ukrainian culture it's like not I am alone you know I have uh, like our matchmaker Tatiana for example she could long time ago get out you know but she don't want to leave her daughter and daughter don't want and daughter has children so they stick together you know and stay together and it's like you know very big case for many Ukrainian people they say oh we will leave all together or we don't go but because of like uh, brother cannot leave Ukraine somebody's brother right or father or like they say no we don't go we go all family or don't go at all you know like it's very hard for people to split another big um, reason is uh, it's of course fear where do I go especially those ladies who never was abroad don't know English don't know like any foreigner language they like how I will communicate how it will be like I will I don't know here I have at least shelter there I will you know I don't know what will be on the street or something you know uh, it's a big fear of changing going out of your box you know and they like okay you know maybe maybe it will soon finish you know I will be optimistic and they just you know try to mm -hmm. feed them with this salt, you know? I think you're right, honey. I think those are the two main reasons uh, on Anna's point. One, you guys know that men from 18 to 60 are conscripted, basically. They cannot leave. You know, they're, they're called, they have to register and they have to serve and protect their country. Um, so yeah, brothers, husbands, they can't leave. So wives are choosing to support their family and, and mothers and fathers, you know. Again, it comes back to the, the main fabric of Ukraine, it's family. And it's what we love, right guys? And it's being, it's being called to the test right now. And you're seeing, it's really true that families stick to get together. That's why less than 10% of Ukrainians have left. And, and I don't know that much more than 10% will leave. It's my personal, personal opinion. I'm, I think we might get to 15% and then everybody else, they're staying for a reason either because of fear or to protect the family, support the family, protect their fellow soldiers, you know, provide that humanitarian aid, you and know, cooking. I, and and they, they want to, and it's not like if they leave, they will never come back. Most of them I talk who around, sitting around Ukraine, Romania, they say, we just wait and we count in days when we are be able to come back to Ukraine. It's a great point. It's how, yeah, it's, it's not like, the, and the, you can see everywhere post of my like friends, they say, now it's so like you know interesting time when doors of whole all around the world open for you but you're sitting in a uh in a this uh, when you enter the house how it's called this yeah the front area front area Foyer. because it's the most safe here place and you're sitting on the floor there and you just don't want to go nowhere you know it's like psychology you know it doesn't match each other you know you have so many open doors but you just don't want to do nothing you know so much yeah it's really like shocking how ukrainians are just you know they're in poland they're in hungary they're in romania and they're just counting the days to come back to ukraine even if it's going to be war-torn they want to get in rebuild 
Um, it's a fallacy that Ukrainians all want to get out of Ukraine, as you see now, right? They, they want a, a ticket to America. Well, they have a free ticket to America, a free ticket to Canada, a free ticket to Australia. We'll see how many actually go at the end of the day. You'll see it's not many. Ukrainians, they're very patriotic, as you now well see, right? Very, and they love their country and they, they cherish it. So that's why to, to win the heart of a Ukrainian woman, that she's going to come to you in America, Canada, Australia, wherever, Europe. It's a tall order. She has to completely trust you. Um, so, guys, we're going live this Saturday, which I believe is March 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to give you more of a long style format, answer all your guys' questions, because I know we've gone dark for a while as we've been putting our mm -hmm. life back yeah. together and deciding while we're waiting for uh, immigration approval to Canada. You know, we're hunkered down here in Cancun, Mexico. So we'll see you guys on Saturday. And again, thank you very much yeah, for thank helping. Thank you very much for help, Dennis, my brother. Yeah. yeah. Like, and for all your donations um, that have yeah, and guys, helped uh, huge. We'll, we'll, we in touch with Orphanage. We help them to get in, uh, in America now, so seven eight of them and uh, like uh, they just paid the fee to uh, po polish uh, and Honey, we'll update on saturday ah, okay. otherwise it's gonna be a long <laughs> okay. video but we'll give okay. you a full humanitarian no, i'm just saying you can continue send your you know your donations because we spend it you know it's not like uh, we, we help because we still continue to ask for you know getting requests for help so we, we're working on that we'll give you all the updates on saturday okay mm -hmm. guys okay. Mm -hmm. yeah see you saturday Take see care. you bye bye